Hey everybody, this is Garrett with Earth and Time, and today we're at Florissant National Monument, about an hour west of Colorado Springs, Colorado. And I'm really excited about this spot for, for a couple of reasons. One, this has the most well-preserved fossilized stumps, petrified wood stumps, anywhere that I know about, specifically even in North America. And two, there's a really fascinating volcanic story associated with those and how they got preserved. And I guess I'll add a third one because I'm wearing a Disney shirt today, is that Disney himself, Walt Disney came here for one of his anniversaries and he and Lily Disney bought a petrified stump from here that actually sits at Disneyland Park today. So with all that being said, <laughs> let's go explore Florissant National Monument. Let's get to it. And before I walk in, check this out. These are some of the animals that would have lived here back about 34 million years ago when the volcanoes erupted and covered this area in ash and preserved the stumps we're gonna look at. But these are the types of animals. So what are we looking at here? What do we have here? We have an orodont, or now all extinct. We have a brontothera, which kind of looks like a rhino. And then we have a mesohippus, basically a proto or early version of a horse. So these would eventually evolve and become the horses that we know today. And here I am for scale, if you can see the brontothera behind me. So let's go inside the visitor center. Let's learn a little bit more about the geology here, as well as these ancient animals and the petrified wood. All right, so I went through the visitor center and the rangers were awesome and actually gave me this fluorescent fossil beds geologic trail map and we're going to be able to walk through here, talk about the geology that set this up. But more important than that, I just saw this giant fossilized tree stump. Now, these were giant redwood trees. Anybody who are familiar with redwoods knows these could be quite large. And this is probably 10 feet across. I'm not allowed to go down there, but a gigantic piece of petrified wood. And specifically, the roots are the stump of it. To give you a little bit more geologic context, this talks about some of the events that happened here and how these became stone. So in the late Eocene, so about 34 million years ago, this valley was buried by a series of volcanic eruptions. And we can see the volcanoes there in the distance. And they came down as large volcanic mud flows or lahars. And those mud flows, much like they had at Mount St. Helens, came down and covered the bases of the giant redwood trees, which wouldn't necessarily knock them over, but covered it in 15 feet of volcanic debris. And because of that, it actually preserved the bases of these trees. Once they were covered, what would happen is the silica that was in the volcanic ash would start replacing the cells in the wood and eventually become fossilized or petrified. And we call this permineralization. And that's where these dissolved minerals seep into the wood and replace the actual cell material with rock. The Rocky Mountain region was much warmer 34 million years ago and this forest was full of towering redwood pines and not only do they have fossils from the trees here preserved but they found numerous insect and other types of tree fossils and leaves around so it gives them an idea about what kind of temperatures were here okay as a geologist one of the things we always want to know is not just where we're at but when we're at and take a look at the stratigraphy so as we look through this whole layer we go from proterozoic into the eocene into where you can see where these stumps are we're going to look at today but it's really a story of water and fire here volcanism and lakes and rivers which allowed these tree stumps like this giant redwood tree stump you see behind me to be preserved we just looked at the geologic time but here's a little bit more about that fluorescent formation and the important thing to remember here is that this is a series of volcanic events and lakes that were in this valley with an occasional stream deposit cutting through and then more volcanism, which actually preserved again, these trees. Knowing we preserve the stump of this, there's always a question of where the roots preserved. And the answer is we don't know. One of the most famous tree stumps here and actually a trio of tree stumps is just that. They call this the trio. And these were where three redwood trees were all growing next to each other or maybe even connected somehow and were preserved in that Lahar event. Now these are around, I would say about 10 feet tall. Diameter is probably six to seven feet around, and there's three of them here. Now, why the spot's also very interesting from a historic point of view, and for a Disney geek like me, or somebody who's fascinated by Disney history, 
is right in this area is where the tree stump came from that Walt Disney purchased here before it was a national monument and that you can see today at Frontierland. And what's different about that piece as opposed to these ones is these are still fairly round. If you ever go visit that piece, notice it's a little bit more oblong. So potentially what could have happened is you had a big tree stump like this and actually fell over or maybe even partially fell over and actually got a little bit squished because of all the sediments and rocks that would have been on top of it, which gives it that oblong look to it. You can actually still see the bark structure on here from this redwood tree from 34 million years ago how amazing is that okay with one of the granddaddy of all trees behind me and the trio behind me so we can see about fluorescent national monument learn a little bit more about the geology see what these rock layers look like i'm really excited to see what the ash layer looks like where it's preserved that actually helped protect the stumps of these redwood trees well, here's the first site I come to, and this says hidden treasures, and it's talking about how they found all kinds of fossil insects and leaves in the lake shells here. And we call lakes lacustrine. So a lot of times called lacustrine deposits, but they found things like spiders and look, even flowers. That's amazing. And bees, as well as lots and lots of leaves. And we can see those layers here you see those parallel fine grain layers? That's where these insects and leaves and flowers are coming out of, which really gives us an idea about what life was like in this valley 34 million years ago. So because they preserve the insects and the flowers and the plants, they can recreate what this ecosystem was. And with that, understand before those volcanic ash flows came in or intermittent between the multiple volcanic events here, figure out what life was doing and what life was like around this this ancient lake that was here this lake Florissant. here's a nice view of some of the animals and what they found around ancient lake Florissant. of course they have dragonflies here and this is a bowfin fish for those who are fisher people maybe you know what those are there's something called a pirate perch that they found they've seen water lilies they've seen larvae from dragonfly different kinds of plants uh water scorpion that's interesting scary sounding as I look up from that sign, it's pretty amazing to think of this valley filled with this lake 34 million years ago. And this is uh, showing where we're actually at right now in Colorado and the idea of what this lake would have looked like. Well, I'm really excited because today, I'm here on a Wednesday, they actually have an excavation pit open from 10 to noon. Let's go take a look at that. And as I'm walking, you can actually see one of the petrified stumps preserved right there. And I can get an idea that all this hilly stuff here is the lahar or ash flow that covered the stumps that I'm walking through now. And we can actually see some more resistive units up above. I'm guessing those are some later volcanic events that came through that are preserved on that hill. And here is the excavation pit. And you can see they have a geologist talking about it here. We can actually see where they're working through this stratigraphic section to learn about the life through that period of time. Really cool. I prefer a single edge razor blade, but some people like a bias cut. Why that specific is the Celsius to Fahrenheit uh, uh, conversion. So from just up from the trench, we can see all the people gathered down there. We can actually look at some of this gray material here. And this is probably some of the ash flow as well and probably some lake beds in here and then we can actually see a nice tuff or ash flow that's been been lithified on top preserving this hill slope so that was really neat they were talking about how they go through the process of clearing the hill to expose fresh rock so they can get the best fossils because the fossils were just sitting on the surface like out here they'd weather and break down and fall apart to share with you what I learned from the geologist here on site, Mr. Bob, who is very friendly and super knowledgeable and shared a lot with us, are a couple of questions he always gets. So one of the questions he gets a lot was, was Lake Florissant 34 million years ago basically at the same elevation? And it sounds like the answer is yes. So it was sitting about 8,000 feet, which we're at about 8,500 8, right now. So somewhere around that range is where Lake Florissant was. Now, what caused Lake Florissant? 
is there are a series of volcanoes that erupted about 34 million years ago southwest of here and there was a river that ran down this valley that with each subsequent eruption a lot of times it would block up that river it would fill up and be a lake and eventually got up to they said 300 feet deep at one point which meant that the lower sections were anoxic so they weren't able to have a lot of oxygen there which is why they have the good fossil preservation but it eventually break through and reestablish some of the streams but those volcanoes are also what are responsible for preserving of course the tree stumps here and he did say the lake was about 12 miles long and i believe a mile wide 34 million years ago as well as as I mentioned before about 300 feet deep so this was a pretty significant lake out here in the Rocky Mountains during that time and just down from the excavation is the tree stump I was really excited to come see and they call this the big stump we saw the ones that were under the shelters being protected but you can see how they've cleared out the rocks behind it the geology behind it so they can really take a close look at what this feature looks like and what this redwood looks like and again we can see the bark it actually looks like there's some different weathering patterns almost looks like charring down on the bottom let's see if they say anything about that this stump is well taller than I am maybe almost one and a half of me or two of me so somewhere around probably 10 feet tall so this shows the local stratigraphy very well or geology so you have our big stump here that was preserved in this volcanic mud flow or lahar which is this grayish really fine gray material back here if we come back here and look again we have a shale unit which is where they're going to find pieces of, of insect and leaf fossils and that's that little ridge right there and then the hill above it is uh, a conglomerate unit and it's part of a debris flow from another volcanic event and we can see that on top up there. So the big stump here was estimated that the tree would have been about 230 feet tall or 70 meters, which is absolutely gigantic. So think about something, you know, 23 stories tall. And they think it was between 500 and 1,000 years old when that volcanic event came through. So if we think about 230 feet up there, that would have been a huge tree and anybody who's gone to the redwoods in california more recently probably can uh, to attest to how large these features are from just on the other side of the big stump i'm just going to pan up and down this valley where we can actually see where there's still some wetlands today so i imagine when they get lots of rain or during snow melt they probably get a little bit of a lake or marshy area but we can get an idea about the size of this valley you can see individuals walking down there for scale now I worked my way into the middle part of the valley and I apologize about the wind. My microphone actually quit working on me. I'm in the middle of the valley now and I'm going to turn around here so you can see both ways and we can still see some of the geology up on the hills that helped build this valley in the first place. So we can look out there and see where there's some of these ash flows and we can see some of the tufts that are on top and these other debris flows. Here's another log. What's fascinating about this is actually the tree rings are preserved and some of these have been exposed in fact you can see them right through here and so scientists are able to study these tree rings and find out about its life 34 million years ago all right from this vantage point you can see the big stump there where they dug it out and it's exposed and see the hill behind it that has the ash fall the lake deposits as well as the debris flow and later volcanic events and we can see another one of these large redwoods that was preserved here in fact it sounds like it was mostly or only redwoods that seem to get preserved here and i'm guessing that's because they could withstand the force of that big lahar or debris flow coming down so they were able to if you will stand their ground quite literally and able to get preserved whereas the other trees during this time all got washed away and ended up somewhere downstream oh this is great and i mentioned disney before it says the monuments excavated petrified stumps include the unique trio which we saw and the big stump we saw but the most viewed of all the stumps is actually the one walt disney purchased that is at disneyland park and actually has not been named however what's really neat is this may be the largest petrified stump in the entire world it's not every day that we get to see the world's largest something but to see the world's largest petrified stump that's awesome taking a look at the cross section across this valley and i apologize about the glare the sun's in a little bit of a rough position but we can see where we saw the stumps coming out 
you can see how they're buried in that lahar and then we can take a look at some of the other geologic units we saw going up on the hill where we saw the big stump and eventually all that sits in this valley here which we saw in the stratigraphy is the much older billion year old rock you like how they talk about they had volcanoes and and the flows that were coming down about 15 miles from here uh, of course he had the lake we talked about this idea there's evidence for this lake but you also had a stream coming through here and it was likely when these redwoods were here it was probably a stream running through and that's why we can see the stumps so close to each other and the lahar came through much like this picture and buried those stumps which allowed them to be preserved so this is a nice view of maybe what people first saw when they came here and that is this is a little piece of the stump that's eroded out as the lahar material was eroding away, which gave people a hint that there was something else going on here. All right, everybody, thank you for joining me today to check out Florissant National Monument. What an amazing place, what an amazing story. What a cool tie back to even Walt Disney. I really enjoyed bringing you here today. If you enjoyed this video, you all know what to do by this time. I will see you all in the next adventure. Take care.